Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you. Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walk. The glory of glory to God on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Reading from the book of Nehemiah. When the seventh month came and the people of Israel were settled in their towns, all the people gathered together in the area in front of the water gate. They asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring out the instruction scroll from Moses, according to which the Lord had instructed Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra, the priest, brought the instruction before the assembly. The assembly was made up of both men and women and anyone who could understand them. and their voices are not heard. Their, their sound has gone out, out to all lands and their message to the end of the world. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost stage of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than big and gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter by honey than honey and come. By them also in your service and light, and in keeping them there is a great reward. We can tell how often you meant, cleanse me from my secret thoughts. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be all in sound and innocent of a great offense. But let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeem. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts. All the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free, and we all were given one spirit to drink. Certainly, the body isn't one part, but many. If the foot says... I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand. 
does that mean it's not part of the body? If the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, does that mean it's not part of the body? The whole body, if the whole body were an eye, what would happen to the hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, what would happen to the sense of smell? As it is, God has placed each one of the parts in the body just like wanted. If all were one and the same body part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts but one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you, or in turn, it can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are the most necessary. The parts of the body that we think are less honorable are the ones we honor the most. The private parts of our body that aren't presentable are the ones that are given the most dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the part with less honor so that there won't be division in the body and so the parts might have mutual concern for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, the ability to help others, leadership skills, different kinds of tongues. All aren't apostles, are they? All aren't prophets, are they? All aren't teachers, are they? All don't perform miracles, do they? All don't have gifts of healing, do they? All don't speak in different tongues, do they? All don't interpret, do they? Use your ambition to try to get the greater gifts. And I'm going to show you an even better way. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogue and was praised by everyone. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue as he normally did and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Heavenly Father, I beseech you this morning as I offer a few words to see before you a, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I uh, had been praying and thinking about our scriptures today. They're all three very much about the renewal of the community, aren't they? I mean, Nehemiah has this uh, rediscovery, literal rediscovery of the scrolls of 
uh, uh, that we would call the Old Testament, but the scrolls that give life and people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And so the community comes together and is renewed uh, in their work. And likewise, I would suggest that Paul is trying to refocus a community, renew a community that is bitterly divided. And so is speaking to them about uh, the different parts they each play and calling them forward uh, to, uh, to do that work. And then lastly, of course, we have Jesus in the synagogue inviting people to see that God is at work in the world around them, that he himself is part of that work. And that's what I want to talk about today. So uh, as, as I was thinking of these passages, uh, there's, a, there's a poem by uh, William Blake, uh, uh, who, and, and uh, I thought I'd, I'd just read a portion of it. It's long. Uh, and, but, I, but listen to, to the words, and I want to meditate on those words as we consider the passage. To mercy, pity, peace, and love, all pray in their distress. And to these virtues of the light, return their thankfulness. For mercy, pity, peace, and love is God our Father dear. And mercy, pity, peace, and love is man, his child, in care. For mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Then every one of every clime that prays in his distress prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. Now, I think that what he's talking about is, is that the human form, particularly the person, the divine image of Jesus, offers us a view of God's nature as love, love mercy, pity, and peace. Right, that love, mercy, pity, and peace is, is the way in which God reveals God's self. And so if we think in particular about Luke, um, uh, and, and we were to open up the Bible and do a little Bible study, right? We might remember that uh, 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 John uh, has, uh, been ba has baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, that, that Jesus has gone himself into the desert, that he's withstood the devil's attempt to kind of call him off his mission, uh, literally offering him different things than what God has invited him to do. Uh, and then he has survived all of that, kind of raised out of the desert, uh, a very real parallel, right, to the people in Egypt for 40 years. Right? So we, we begin to see that God has done God's work with Jesus in the desert, formed it, and immediately what we have is he goes to the synagogue Today, right? So we're talking about really Jesus's first in Luke's gospel, really his first act. And, and I think that the intent here is to reveal Jesus as a, a, a continuing act of God to renew the community, to call it back, to move it forward, to invite it into mission. Uh, and what also is very clear, not unlike the Nehemiah passage, I think, we have this sense that the real form of that ministry is going to happen locally, right? So where does it begin? It doesn't begin in the temple in Jerusalem. It begins actually in the countryside in Galilee, where most of Jesus' ministry has power, especially if you look at Mark's gospel or John's, and that that ministry is taking shape and given shape in the local context more so than in the big city. And Jesus reads from the scroll of Isaiah, right? In that beautiful passage of uh, uh, the spirit being upon him uh, and, uh, you know, reading Isaiah uh, and Isaiah's prophecy about the spirit being upon uh, him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim a year of peace and transformation uh, uh, in, in the tradition. It would be a, a Shemitah, a cultural Shabbat, Sabbath, for the whole, in other words, that this, this peace, we might say, is, is going to be one that really changes uh, everything in which captors are freed from their yokes. The things that bind people will be lifted up, uh, that healing will happen, uh, and the oppressed will sense some um, freedom for themselves. 
And so we're offered this image, I think, of Jesus not only as the divine Christ, uh, but Jesus as continuing the great work of God and love, mercy, pity, and peace, right? So, so Jesus is saying, and he says at the very end of the passage, saying those profound words, and on this day, this, this has been fulfilled, right? So this idea that this is not just something he's reading, it's not just about Isaiah and the, and the prophecy for the Israelites many years ago, but it actually is something for them in that synagogue today, and we might even say for us. Right. Even today, this image of revelation of who Jesus uh, is and who God is uh, offers a sense of that. To us. Mm-hmm. Now, you all know this, uh, my, you know, because you all are, are formed outside of the normal ways in which church works. Right. So you as a community are yourselves kind of an image of that Christ at work out in the world, right? I mean, here we sit in the midst of a of, uh, dining room uh, in, in a public school. And uh, also think of the work that you all do uh, uh, with your neighbors, with the school uh, in, uh, in conversations with them as they've gone through the pandemic. Uh, maybe we might think of the work that some of you do uh, with uh, the, the nursing home, right? I mean, like, so you all not only are out here in the world, you're also doing that work that Christ imagines by having uh, yourselves take on the image of Christ, quite literally, that goes out. Because I think that's what part of what Jesus is saying is that this is this is not just about inside the community. It's not just inside the synagogue, right? It's not just inside the temple of Nehemiah. But this is the way we're to be out in the world. And of course, Jesus has been out, comes back to the synagogue, but then is immediately going to take off again. Uh, uh, so there's this constant kind of presumption, if you will, Jesus' belief, Jesus' invitation that we ourselves, as recipients of the Holy Spirit, have been given work to do. And Paul, in his letter to Corinthians, kind of gives us some ideas of the many things that we as Christians may undertake as one body, right? That it, mm-hmm. it takes people working mm-hmm. with those who are poor and in need, uh, for those who maybe need comfort in the midst of trial, and then it takes people to come and set up, right? <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of what Paul says. It's going to take all of us to do it, and none of those is a greater thing, but what is important is that we're out doing that as a community, as the human face, as I would say, the human face uh, of, of God, so that the church and the community made up of you and me now really shoulder the responsibility in theological terms as the temple of the Holy Spirit or through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to go and uh, put, as our presiding bishop likes to say, our shoulders to the gospel plow, right? to get at work in the many ways uh, that, um, that we're invited to do so. And, and this, in this kind of broad sense of things, there's no bystanders in the kingdom of God, right? We're all given work and our responsibility is kind of figure that out. What is it? What are the things that we can do? How do we have our particular shape? And what's beautiful, I think, about our community uh, is that everybody can have that, right? Like, Everybody has the possibility of providing for the community, whether it's their presence or their work or the work they do outside. Like just, you know, uh, this is all us, uh, if you will. And so what's beautiful, I think, about Blake's poem to kind of tie this back together is that that human face he talks about is kind of intertwined, right? It is talking about the divine. It is talking about God as love, mercy, pity, and peace. It is talking about Jesus as the face of that love. But it has that third invitation, doesn't it? That we ourselves now become love, mercy, pity, and peace in the world. For mercy has a human heart. Pity has a human face. Love the human form divine, that we're actually made to love the human form divine, the peace 
our, our human dress, our way of acting, so that every human being that prays in their distress, prays to the human form divine, and may discover, I would say, in us, in you and I, this beautiful body of Christ. So prophesied by Jesus in the synagogue uh, that lifts up the people in Nehemiah and is lived out as we see the passage from Paul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Y'all will stand with me. We'll continue with the Nicene Creed found on page six of your leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world's come. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.